for example, just in the Dallas area. He joins us right now. Ryan, what is the real skinny on this? I'm not imagining the lines. I mean, the shortage is more having to do with disruptions. But what are you seeing? What are you hearing? Actually, uh, Neil, the shortage has less to do with disruptions than it has to do with just good old-fashioned panic. I see. Unfortunately, with the storm coming in and, and people's concerns are high, they're hearing things like, wait, refineries are down and pipelines are down. Let me tell you this number. We've got 230 million barrels of gasoline in inventory in the United States today. That's almost 10 billion gallons. We have enough gasoline. The challenge is getting that gasoline to the pumps. And unfortunately, what's happening is there's people that are so concerned, their emotions are high, and they are rushing to the pumps. We're having a run on the pumps, I and see. that is causing a shortage at the gas station that the, the infrastructure, the systems just cannot support. If there had been no hurricane, if everybody in Dallas goes to the gas stations at the same time and fills up five-gallon buckets and gas tanks as well, they would run into this exact same problem. Yeah, and I noticed that there was one report yesterday, I think it was a Fox report, I hope it was a Fox report, uh, where they were talking to some woman who was there. Her tank was already three-quarters full, but out of concern that she might not get it, she was there on a line with everybody else for the remainder quarter of a tank. So what, what's the drill you tell fellow Texans? That's it. Right now, we're telling people, uh, look, we're monitoring this closely, and there are some logistical issues. I mean, getting sufficient trucks in to respond to this concern, uh, getting pipelines up and running again, and that stuff is happening right now. I've been telling people here, look, in the next two, three, maybe four days, I think this thing is going to, for the most part, be over because people will see there's gasoline at the pump. Now, that's Texas. You know, in other parts of the country, like the New England area, the Colonial Pipeline is not up and running. And so actually, while we don't have supply concerns here, there are some supply concerns. Once again, not that we don't have enough gasoline, but it's not just getting it to the pumps. It's getting it into the region in New England where they need our gas because they depend on Texas very much for gasoline up there. You know, and it's interesting, Ryan, the markets really have so much to do with the price of gasoline, gasoline futures prices, which have rocketed over the past week. And a lot of that is built on the fears that you alluded to that might not be fully justified, but it, the, the fear becomes the reality that is soon seen at the pump. Does that worry you? That's right. Well, you know, I think at the end of the day, this is a very robust infrastructure, refining right. pipelines, trans I mean, there's going to be enough gasoline there. So unfortunately, we've got to wait for people to realize that. When they see gasoline at the pumps, uh, you know, then, then the fears will calm down. There, there won't be this rush, and this thing will blow over. But for the next few days, I'm going to tell you, because of this rush and the concerns have become a self-fulfilling prophecy, and we can't get the gasoline to the stations fast enough to respond to this run on the stations. And so for people that, um, that have travel plans, whatever, they've got to be thoughtful about that. I'll tell you this. If you've got enough gas in your car to last a few days, I would bet you 100 bucks to your dollar that you're going to be just fine. All right. Good words. Calming words. Ryan Sitton, Texas Railroad Commissioner, thank you very, very much.